So let's go ahead and talk about the Packers and the Vikings game yesterday. By far, I think by far the worst game of the day when you talk about just the flow of the game, how it was throughout the entire day, how somehow Aaron Rodgers, because of the fact that he has literally nobody to throw the ball to, looked like one of the worst quarterbacks in the league yesterday from a statistical standpoint because there was nothing that he was able to do with the offense that was put in front of him. Now, I will say this. The running game was working for the Green Bay Packers. Um, something that needs to be addressed over this week and uh, fixed is the fact that they ran the ball 15 times for 94 yards, a shade, actually not even a shade. It's about six and a half yards per carry. And to only run the ball 15 times and you're averaging six and a half yards per carry, especially given the fact that every single time Aaron Rodgers was stepping back on his 39 pass attempts and 43 dropbacks, if you include the sacks, the problem was that nobody was open. Who, who was getting open consistently against this defense yesterday? Nobody. And even, even if they were getting open, Christian Watson had drops, Romeo Dobbs had drops. Like, from literally the jump of the game yesterday, the Green Bay Packers should have been up 7-0, but Christian Watson dropped it. Uh, Romeo Dobbs had his drops, like I said. But, I mean, this team can't rely on chemistry that Randall Cobb and Aaron Rodgers have to be able to get through the fact that they can't have Lazard on the field yet. And I'm not even going to sit here and act like Alan Lazard coming back is going to be the end-all, be-all to this Green Bay Packers offense because I just don't think Alan Lazard is that talented of a wide receiver. But I think <clears throat> we're getting to see what this offense looks like as one of the first years where Aaron Rodgers doesn't have that Devontae Adams, that Jordy Nelson, that type of player that not only does he have that same kind of chemistry that he's had with somebody like a Randall Cobb, but also somebody who has a talent, also somebody who has route running ability like Jordy Nelson and like Devontae Adams have. Um, and look, Devontae Adams, it's no surprise that the first game that he had without Aaron Rodgers was a lot better than the first game that Aaron Rodgers had without Devontae Adams. Um, this, this is the culmination of just an utter terrible job of the last four or five off seasons for the Green Bay Packers in terms of team development, in terms of talent acquisition, in terms of talent development. Um, this has been this has been a long time coming for Green Bay. And I don't want to sit here and just overreact to one game because Green Bay lost the first game of the year last year. Um, and it was an even worse showing than it was last night. Um, so I don't want to overreact, but I also do want to say a big credit to Minnesota, a big credit to Kevin O'Connell, a big credit to Kirk Cousins, and a big credit to this defense yesterday. They got after Aaron Rodgers. They were able to rely on a little bit of luck with some of the drops that Green Bay had early and throughout the game. Um, but the guys that they were relying on and the guys that they were hoping that they could rely on, the guys like Zadarius Smith, who came over from Green Bay, the guys like Jordan Hicks, who came over from Arizona, the guys like Dan Daniel Hunter, who have been there for a long time now. Um, each one of those guys had a sack. Jordan Hicks led the team in tackles. Zadarius Smith was kind of like an emotional leader for this team yesterday. Um, the stat sheet doesn't really show it with only two tackles, one sack, and two quarterback hits. But, I mean, I think everybody on the both sidelines knew Zadarius Smith was going to have a sack by the end of the day. Um and he was going to let Green Bay know about it at some point during the game yesterday. Um, I do want to keep this quick because I think with just how I'm going to try to do these throughout the year, I'm just going to try to do quick six, seven minute recaps of each game. Um, so I think the last thing I'll end up on is Justin Jefferson looks even better than he did last year. There's a lot more he's doing more uh, pre-snap now. Um, the thought is that with Kevin O'Connell coming over from the Rams, with the success that Kevin O'Connell had with Cooper Cup as the passing game coordinator last year, the hope is that he can emulate some of that with Justin Jefferson this year. Now, 
to say Justin Jefferson and Cooper Cup are the same receiver would be pretty stupid. But to say that Justin Jefferson could match the same production that Cooper Cup provided last year for the LA Rams is pretty close to being true. And after this first game of the year, nine catches, 184 yards, two touchdowns. I mean, there were times Justin Jefferson was just wide open, almost with nobody even within 20 yards of grass in between him and the end zone. Um, and that's really good to see if you're Minnesota because Green Bay came into the game yesterday with a thought that they had a really good defense. And I think the thought around the league was that Green Bay had a really good defense. And for Minnesota to be able to shred them with Justin Jefferson like that yesterday, um, it speaks to the hope that Justin Jefferson can provide that same production that Cooper Cup gave the Rams last year. And we hopefully are looking at Justin Jefferson at the end of the year as the same way we were looking at Cooper Cup last year as a possible Triple Crown winner. Um, I don't know how many times we've had back-to-back -back years with a Triple Crown winner, but Justin Jefferson, out of the gate, is looking like one of those guys who could be in the running for that at the end of the year. Um, I guess to end it off, I'll say, you know, Green Bay is a really good team still. Um, like I said, Christian Watson dropped a touchdown to start the game. In the NFL, these games are so momentum-based, and they are so, like, if the flow of the game just is so wonky, like, you go from dropping a touchdown to begin the game to not scoring any points in the first half to throwing, like, it, it just, it, you know. Green Bay had moments where they could have taken control yesterday. They could have taken control early. They could have taken control after it got out of hand. They could have taken control late. Um, but they just had moments where it was like, okay, if they're going to do it, they would have done it by now. And the fact that they're not doing it is kind of concerning. It's kind of concerning. But again, I don't want to overreact to one game because Green Bay had the exact same start to the season last year. It was an even worse game last year for them against the Saints when they began the season. Um, and they ended up being one of the best teams in the NFC. So don't be surprised if that happens again. But also don't be surprised if this team is competing for being one of the worst teams in the NFC North. Because right now they are one of two teams in their division without a win with them and the Lions. Both Chicago and obviously Minnesota won yesterday. So they're going to be very far behind from the beginning of the year. But again, something they dealt with last year. And they still ended up winning the division.